Welcome to our today's lecture with the topic, is combination the key? So we will compare the simultaneous terminal anal analysis machine with a separated GG and DSC. But before we come to the methods and instruments, let's have a general look of what we expect from TGA and DSC analyzers. So if we look on TGA analyzers, we typically talk about material properties like mass change, decomposition temperatures, thermal stability. These are all properties which identify or characterize products. Furthermore, TGA also allows the performance of advanced material analyses, like for instance, the analysis of the kinetic of a decomposition reaction. The DSC is similar, where we look on different kinds of properties, like for instance, the melting temperature, phase transitions with the related enthalpies, degree of crystallinity, crystallization temperature, and many more to characterize products. Further on, the DSC also allows the thermophysical property determination, especially or mainly the determination of the specific heat of a material. And finally, of course, also DSC can do advanced analytic approaches like OIT or also the analysis of reaction kinetics. So we see here, the TGA and DSC are two of the main techniques and methods in the field of thermal analysis, and of course, the company Netch offers a quite variety of instrument solutions to measure these kind of uh, methods and properties. First of all, we have the dedicated DSC systems, either our DC 204F1 Phoenix or our DC 214 Polymer for the low temperature range, or the DSC 404 in the high temperature field. Similar, we have dedicated TGA instruments like our 201, 209F1 Lipa or 209F3 Tarsus system. On the other side, we have the simultaneous thermal analysis, or short STA, which is just the combination of TGA and DSC at the same time. And this is also the main benefit of this technique. We do all the measurements, the TGA and DSC measurement, on one sample, in one measurement, on one system. And therefore, we have no problems with, for instance, material homogeneity, sample preparation, or the influence of the measurement conditions, because as said, one sample in one measurement. So we see here, it sounds quite good, the STA. Um, let's dive a little bit deeper into the topic in comparison these dedicated methods versus the combined method. In our portfolio, the dedicated systems are typically quite defined. This means we have one furnace option, um, one sensor option. Typically, you use also one type of crucibles for the dedicated techniques, either the alumina crucibles for the TGA or the um, aluminum crucibles for the DSC analysis. We have also a certain range of choice if we look, for instance, on the cooling options of our devices. Nevertheless, the dedicated systems provide a quite defined instrument environment, and therefore they are designed for special key markets, especially if we look in a low temperature range for the application in the polymeric or pharmaceutical uh, analysis fields. On the other side, we have our STA. The STA is a platform system, so-called HTP400 series, which is defined by its modularity. So we have different types of furnaces available, up to 10 different ones. We have different types of sensors, only TGA, TGA-DSC, TGA-DTA combined. Um, with the sensors, we have thermocouples available to tweak the sensitivity. Then we have many crucibles available for um, measuring different kinds of samples because especially in the high temperature field, we have a problem that most likely there is some kind of interaction between the sample and certain types of crucible materials. So we have here also crucible types like graphite, like yttria, zirconia, and so on available. And finally, um, due to the platform system, we have also the possibility to use different kinds of accessories. Here, mainly the possibility, for instance, to also use humidity generators or vapor generators to measure under humid or water vapor atmospheres. If we sum this all up for the STA, we end up with a universal instrument environment, which allows us to customize with machines to the needs of our customers. Unfortunately, this uh, universal instrument environment the variety of all the options leads also to a small drawback, which is the complexity on this kind of system. So it's sometimes difficult to find the right solution 
for our customers' needs. And here, just a reminder for you, just contact your net uh, salesperson and we will help you to find the best solution for your uh, analytic task. The SDA has also some other unique points which are different in comparison to the dedicated systems. And three of them I have with me today, which I want to show you a little bit more in detail now. First of all, the topic of real enthalpy. So in normal DSC analysis, we look, for instance, on phase transition effects like here, um, a phase transition effect in high temperature range above 1200 or around 1200 degrees C. Typically for this high temperature phase transitions, they are mainly or mostly accompanied by a mass change which was happening before. This is not a principal problem. However, in a dedicated DSC analysis, the measured enthalpy values are always related to the starting mass of the measurement. However, if the sample changes in between the measurement, this value is just wrong, because at the point of the transition, the sample mass is not anymore the starting mass. And here comes the benefit of the STA. The STA measures the mass simultaneously to the DSC signal and therefore knows at every point of the measurement how is the real mass of the sample and therefore can determine the real enthalpy of the phase transition. The second unique application is the use of the already mentioned accessories. Here I have an example for a humid atmosphere application. So we can use a humidity generator to um, bring in water into our measurement atmospheres. Here is an example of a uh, polyamide foil sample. And we measured the sample at a constant temperature of 40 degrees C and just changed the water level inside of the gas atmosphere, starting from a relative humidity of 25% up to relative humidity of 75%. And we see in the corresponding TGA signal the absorption of water and therefore the mass increase, which is just related to the different levels of water inside of the atmosphere. So here with this approach, you can easily measure the storage behavior of materials. But of course, we can also use this humid atmospheres as a reactive medium so that we can, for instance, analyze corrosion reactions. The last unique application for our SDAs is just its temperature range. Because we have different types of furnaces available, we can even connect a so-called tungsten furnace with a tungsten heating element and measure to up to temperatures of 2,400 degrees C with our instrument, which even allows us to analyze the behavior of ceramics or high melting metal alloys within our devices, which is just not possible with small tabletop um, dedicated DSC system. So if we sum this all up, it seems quite good um, that the STA is a good solution. Mm -hmm. However, this is not a fair comparison up to now. Because if we look on the dedicated systems, they are not designed for high temperature applications. They are not designed for having this um, accessory part with all the humid atmospheres and something like this. They are designed mainly for the low temperature application, for instance, polymer analysis. So let's have a look in this field, in this low temperature field of polymer and pharmaceutical analysis. And first of all, here we can look on the sensitivity of the DSC signal. So we see here on the red curve a measurement on a standard DSC 214 polymer system with an intercooler and on a standard STA 449F3 Jupiter system with the most common furnace option of a silicon carbide furnace. First of all, if we compare here the signals, we see most obviously that the small dedicated DSC system gives much more information. The signals are higher, therefore more sensitive, and especially the small weak signals can be easily seen. Unfortunately, on the STA side, they are not so easily seen. So maybe some of you are already experienced user on Netch instruments. You will most likely say, yep, yeah, but you have said something about thermocouples and that the STA can use different type of thermocouples. This is correct. If we compare here the thermocouples of the two machines, we are completely different. A dedicated DSC like our polymer typically uses a type E thermocouple. This is really uh, characterized by its high sensitivity. The used type S thermocouple on the STA is unfortunately just a standard thermocouple, which is not so sensitive, but can be used in a large range. The STA can also be equipped with a type E thermocouple, and then we would more or less end up by the sensitivity of the DSC analyzer we see here on the top. However, these thermocouples have one major drawback, and this is that they can't be used in a high or large temperature range. 
More precisely, such a type E thermocouple can only be used up to 700 degrees C under inert conditions and only up to 500 under oxidizing conditions. This means if we want to do a combined DSC TGA analysis, this is just not enough because a TGA analysis of a polymer, for instance, typically um, includes a heating up to 850 degrees C under inert conditions and then a switch to oxidizing conditions and going further up to roughly 1000 degrees C. This would not be possible with a type E thermocouple inside of the STA. And therefore, we compared here the more common approach of a type S thermocouple to have really this combined TGDSC approach on the STA. The second point we have to look on the STA is the starting effect. So maybe for the people which are not so common with our instruments, the small DSC instrument just around this size and the furnace inside is just this size. And on the STA instrument, the furnace has roughly the size of this range. So this means the furnace is much, much larger in comparison to the small dedicated system. The result is that this large furnace is more difficult to control for defined heating, for starting heating, for changing the heating rates, for instance. And therefore, we see this starting effect in a DSC signal. On the next slide, we see a little bit more precisely what this means. We have here on the bottom part the heating rate curves. And if we start a measurement from STA from room temperature, roughly 30 degrees C, you have a certain range in which the the heating rate must be stabilized, and due to the furnace size, this can take a certain range or time to stabilize, here shown for a relatively high heating rate with 20 Kelvin per minute. Nevertheless, this means we have an overlapping starting effect in the first 100 degrees C in the measurement. And if you're looking in this range for certain thermal um, effects, you will most likely have problems to evaluate them. Okay. Again, maybe some of you are already experienced with our machines and we will say, yeah, but your STA has different furnace options. And one of these furnace options is a coolable furnace, in this case, the steel furnace. The steel furnace has a range of minus 150 degrees C up to 1000 degrees C. So it seems to be the perfect solution for our combined TGA DSC approach in the low temperature range. We can measure the phase transitions of polymer in the subambient range and we can do the standard TGA analysis up to 1000 degrees C. This is correct. Um, however, there is one remark which I want to give to this furnace. We have here a protective tube made out of steel, which is coated with an inert um, coating. So it will withstand um, also reactive atmospheres like the oxidizing atmosphere. However, it is not completely comparable to a ceramic um, protective tube. Nevertheless, Let's see what the steel furnace can do. First of all, we have here a comparison of a steel furnace measurement and a measurement on the polymer, both done under nitrogen atmosphere and both doing the same temperature profile, a quite typical uh, one. We cool down with 20 Kelvin per minute. We hold an isothermal temperature of minus 100 degrees C and then heat up. Let's have first a look on the temperature profile. You see here for the wet curve for the polymer, this small dedicated DSC with its small furnace is just able to follow the temperature profile like we want. Even the high cooling rates of minus 20 Kelvin per minute can be easily achieved and controlled. On the other side, we have the steel furnace, the quite big furnace, if you remember. Um, so here we really suffer in getting the high, uh, heating, uh, high cooling rates um, realized. So we are not able to cool down with 20 Kelvin per minute, even if we use liquid nitrogen as cooling medium. And therefore, we don't achieve the same temperature profiles. Nevertheless, you see in the second part, the heating with 10 Kelvin per minute can be achieved with the steel furnace. So here we must just admit that the cooling rates and the cooling times are much longer in comparison to a polymer system, to a small dedicated DSC. Then let's have a look on the top part of this graph. Here we see that we have a quite noisy blue curve, and this is the DSC signal of the STA system. And to be honest, this is such a no noisy curve that you can't really evaluate effects in that way. The reason why we have here a noise in our DSC signal is just the construction of the STA. The STA has no contact between the furnace wall, so the heating part or cooling part, and the sensor. Therefore, we need a heat or temperature transmitting medium inside our machine to transfer the heat or the cooling power of the furnace to our sensor and therefore to our sample. Uh, in this case, we used nitrogen, our atmosphere, as transfer medium. 
And unfortunately, nitrogen is not the best medium to transfer heat because of its small heat conductivity value. Therefore, to get better results in the sub-ambient range with an STA system, we must change our atmosphere to helium. With helium, because of the better heat transfer um, properties of this kind of atmosphere or gas, uh, we see that we can get, of course, a good DSC signal or baseline with an STA system. But you must remind, we need helium. This is not working with nitrogen, and unfortunately helium is ab roughly above 10 times more expensive than the nitrogen. With that, um, I'm coming to the end of the today's lecture. Let me summarize, please, what I have told you. Um, first of all, we have had a look on the STA, the combined TGDSE analyzers, in its unique points. First of all, its unique selling applications. So this means we have this real enthalpy, for instance, we have the humidity possibilities with all the accessories over high temperature application, which I showed you. Further on, the STA was characterized by its modularity, by the possibility to exchange different parts to use, for instance, different kind of furnaces, different sensors, or the accessible accessories. This all gives us the possibility to design an instrument which is more or less customized to the needs for your application. Of course, this was also a complexity part, but be reminded, we will help you if you need help to find the correct instrument for your solution. Nevertheless, we have also seen that the STA is not the only answer, especially in a low temperature range. We suffer at some points if we look, for instance, with the steel furnace application, that we have less sensitivity if we want to do combined TGA DSC experiments. We have, of course, the starting effects due to the larger furnaces. We require liquid nitrogen and helium to get good results in the sub-ambient range. We have only the coated, inert coated protective tube, so it is stable, but the lifetime is not comparable to a ceramic protective tube, and something that I not mentioned up to now, but the steel film is also not the best solution for doing evolved gas analysis if you are interested in this. So if we sum this up, the performance of an STA is just limited in the lower temperature range, so for the typical polymer and pharmaceutical sector, and therefore, just my last remark for this lecture, Based on our experience in our application lab, we would always um, advise that if you want to go in a low temperature range or work in a low temperature range, please go for the two dedicated devices instead of just the STA, because here it's just a compromise. Nevertheless, if you have only the option for one instrument, the STA can still give you good results and help you to solve your problems. Thank you for your attention.